Okay, so this right here is the Brisket Origin 940 Smart Grill. So this grill has some AI capabilities inside of it, at least according to the company. So we'll talk about how smart this grill is in a second, but this grill does come in two different versions. So this version is the 940 version and the 940 stands for 940 square inches of grilling space on the inside. And then they also do have a 580 version of this grill, which of course the 580 stands for 580 square inches. And the normal price for the 580 is $999 and the normal price for the the 940 is $1,399, but they do have some holiday Black Friday sales going on at the time of me posting this video. And so the 580 is coming in at $599 and the 940 is coming in at $749. But by the time you are watching this video, these sales probably are going to be over. So check out the link in the description below for the latest pricing. Now the assembly of this grill was pretty easy and straightforward. It took me maybe around 35, 40 minutes to put it all together myself. They do recommend two people because at one point you do have to flip the grill back on its side and it is a little heavy, but I was able to manage by myself. Now this grill does come with four wheels total and the two small wheels will be able to rotate all the way around for maneuverability. And you can also lock those in place. And then you do have two bigger wheels, which look really nice and should be really good as far as like moving this grill around in grass and other different types of terrain. And then you also have this storage shelf that gives you a little bit of space to put some things on when you are cooking. And you also do get a few different hanging hooks. But the one thing that is missing that I do want to see by default on this grill is some type of front shelf because when I'm cooking a lot I like to have things right in front of me as I'm putting them on and off of the grill but you don't have this on this grill but the brisket company I like saying the name but the brisket company did release a front folding shelf that you can buy as an additional accessory only for the 580 so this isn't available for the 940 that does kind of suck but you can get it for the 580 if you just really want that now this is a hundred percent wood pellet fire grill so this is the only way you can use this grill no propane hookups nothing like that but on the left hand side you will find the hopper where you will be placing these wood pellets. brisket did send over some of their own branded wood pellets and this is like their oak flavor and then after you open these up you just go ahead and dump these into the pellet hopper on the left hand side and these do have this little grate that will be kind of help separating the pellets and kind of spreading them out evenly and this hopper does hold 22 pounds of pellets and brisket does sell these as two 20 pound bag pairs so you get a total of 40 pounds per order now we are cooking with pellets the pellets are fed into this auger which is going to be preparing the pellets for the cooking process and then that's going to be providing the heat source that you get for your grilling but eventually you do need to clean out the ash and the residue from those pellets after cooking but they do have a very simple hopper pellet clean out system so on the left hand side you have this little knob that you go ahead and just pull out then now this will open up this kind of like hidden door here and then the ashes will fall down into this other tray and in this tray you will find two slots that will be holding some aluminum liners one is going to be for the grease runoff and then the other one will be for the ash coming from the pellets and you can get multiple uses out of these just by washing them off but when you do need to replace some brisket does sell some replacements on their website and also on the inside of the grill you will find a drip pan liner and this is going to be allowing that grease and fat and all that stuff run off to be going into that that catch tray that i just showed you but they also do sell these drip pan liners that you can use as a buffer on top of the drip pan so then now when it comes to clean up basically you just have to go ahead and take that off and throw it away but when you do get your grill they do throw in a couple of the drip pan liners and also a couple of the tray liners by default so you do have a little bit of work with right out of the box. Now around the grill, you will find some areas for the smoke to escape here. So you do have some holes here on the side. Then also on the back, you have this exhaust that actually points the smoke down and then it kind of rises up. And then on the front, you'll be able to see some of that smoke escaping too. Now the grill itself does have a very nice clean black and silver design here. And the main finish of the body of the grill is a matte black powder coat finish that does have a little bit of like water resistance and stuff or weather resistance, if you want to call it that. And I did leave this grill outside in the rain accidentally overnight. And when I came to it you know it was wet of course and when I wiped it off I did have some water spots here and there but overall the main components of the grill remain dry and even the hopper was dry as I lift up this lid you can see that no water got on the inside which is very important but no matter what I do recommend using some type of grill cover no matter where you live and of course brisket does sell their own fitted grill covers and also helping with weather sealing and also to be able to keep the heat inside of the grill is this gasket that's around the inside of the main lid so this is really nice you sometimes have to add this on after the 
fact, but brisket adds it on by default. Now on the front of the grill, you will find this color LCD screen, which didn't get damaged in the rain, so that's good, but also it's nice and bright. And on the right-hand side of that, you will find this control knob that you can use to set the temperature and navigate through the menus. And also you can press in on that to do certain actions. And then you will find a couple of other buttons like the menu button and stuff below that. Now this also has a couple of different hookups for temperature probes. And in the box, they do include them, but I think in my excitement, in my rushing of unboxing this grill, I think I accidentally threw those away. So I don't have them to show you here, but with every grill, you will be getting those temperature probes. So you can place those in your meat. And then now the grill can also go ahead and show you the temperature of the meats on this LCD screen to give you a more accurate reading of how you are cooking. And so these physical controls are nice, but the best way to control this grill is by using the brisket app that you can download on your smartphone. And inside of this app, you can now connect the grill to Wi-Fi. So I'm inside of the app right now and I'm showing you how easy it is to go ahead and tap on this. And then now I can go ahead and set that desired temperature to maybe like 225 degrees, set grill temperature. And then now we'll go ahead and show you in real time as that temperature is rising. And now you can see this temperature start to rise here and I can actually smell the smoke coming in from my backyard. It's actually making me a little bit hungry here, but <laughs> let's keep looking around the app. So this button right here will allow you to set the grill in a warming mode. So this will put the temperature at 165 degrees. And then down here is where it will display in real time the temperature from the two temperature probes if you are using those. And then below that, you'll find two different timers that you can set. So you can tap on this and then now you can set the hours, you can set the minutes, and then now go ahead and set that. And the reason why you can use two different timers is because you might be using two different cuts of meat, or maybe you have like a brisket on and maybe some corn and you just wanna have two different timers to kind of alert you to let you know that you need to move on to your next step. And then if I wanted to remotely shut down the grill, I can slide that over like so. And then when the grill is not ignited yet, this will actually have a little slider down here. So you can slide it this way to ignite the grill. And this button right here actually came in a software slash firmware update. So this is the new power smoke feature. If you want an extra burst of smoke in your flavor of your cooking, so you can activate this and then it gives you a little warning telling you that the temperature controls will be a little bit different here. Um, but this isn't for like high heat cooks. This is going to be really more suited for low and slow type of cooks, especially for things like briskets and stuff. And now I got this little notification telling me that the preheating has completed there. So that is good. Again, you get these notifications um, as it reaches that current temperature or that set temperature that you want. And it's just nice knowing that I can go inside and watch the game, get a notification, let me know that the grill is ready for me to go ahead and start cooking. You can also look at some cooking graphs here. So this is for all of my grill nerds here. I actually haven't looked at this yet, but yeah, this gives you a different amount of information here if you really want to get fine tuned there with your cooking. And also you can schedule the grill ignition. And then you have the option to season the grill. And this is what you do when you first get the grill from the factory because it might have some, you know, protective chemicals and things on the, the grill plates and stuff. And you want to burn that stuff off. So you can do that within the app or you can set it to like a high temperature for like 30 minutes and that'll do the process to go ahead and season that grill. But then we can X out of this section here and go back to the main portion of the app here. So this is where you'll see different videos on how to put the, the grill together and connect it to Wi-Fi and stuff. But they actually have a decent amount of recipes in here and you can separate them from beef to chicken or different vegetables. And then you can scroll down and see all these different ones that have been recently added. And they don't just have like just meats. They have actual recipes for like chili and stuff. So it's a really good variety. So if you go to this brisket recipe here, it'll let you know the cooking time, the rest time, basically everything you need to know to go ahead and get started. And I'll walk you through the different cooking steps here. But one thing I did notice is that when I do go to play this video, it actually isn't available. So hopefully they'll update that uh, later on. But um, yeah, when you do find the recipe that you want to use, you can actually send this recipe to the grill. And this is a part of their in no grill experience. So you can send this recipe to the grill and at the four hour mark, it'll know that it needs to change the temperature, whether higher or lower. And it'll do that automatically without you having to go do it yourself. Now you still have to, you know, again, do your own things as far as the cooking steps, as far as taking the brisket out and wrapping it up and stuff. And then after I sent it to the grill, it does tell me that I do need to insert the probes because it will be able to monitor the temperature of the probe that's inside of the brisket and be able to, again, adjust some of those settings as you go along the way. And then also, again, this will tell you that you do need to still spritz it or they recommend you spritzing it and also wrapping it and stuff like that. And right here, it shows you that step one is to smoke the brisket at 225 degrees. And that is really nice to see. And then now you can go ahead and tap on that and go ahead and see the next steps that are coming up. But of course, you don't have to use this recipe. You can have your own recipe that you just follow by yourself, or you can actually create that recipe inside of the app. And then now you can go ahead and build this own grilling program, name it, whatever you want. And then now you can choose different settings as far as being able to set the temperature uh, that you're looking for as far as the grill, then also what temperature that you're looking for coming from the pro 
probe and also a timer and also some other notes that you want to add in. All right, but now let's talk about how it is to cook on this thing. So from my cooking experience, this is pretty straightforward. This thing is really easy to use. It's hard to mess up. You can still mess up, but it's very hard to do that. And that's because you don't have to baby it like traditional grills where you, if you are using wood or using charcoal and stuff, you have to kind of move that stuff around and you know keep checking the temperature over and over again and really worry about a lot of different hot spots and things where on this one, of course, right in the middle is going to be the, the hottest spot of the grill. But even on the outsides of it, um, it wasn't like too much of a difference. So I felt that I can put multiple meats on this and still get a really good consistent cook across all of those different meats. And this 940 gave me plenty of space for my cooking needs. I did make some brisket for Thanksgiving. So I was able to put a couple of like seven or eight pound briskets on that top rack and still give them enough space. And I can do that for a slow cook overnight at around like 200 degrees if I wanted to. But of course, you still have that main cooking surface that's going to be closer to the, the main heating source there. But that's going to be good for doing your traditional grilling and also searing different meats and stuff. Now, it did suck not having the temperature pros that come with the grill to be able to monitor the temperature of my meat. But I do have these Chef IQ smart thermometers here. And this is a two pack, which is cool because these are wireless. So you don't have to worry about wires getting in the way when you are cooking. And the fact that they do come with this charging case as well, you can place these in the case. They'll go ahead and charge them back up so they're ready for when you do want to use them the next time you are cooking. Now, you do have to use a separate app to be able to monitor the temperature while you are using these probes versus the wired probes that come with the grill. And you can monitor those along with the temperature of the grill all within the brisket app. But in my experience, you can never have enough temperature probes because if I am cooking like maybe four different pieces of meat, those two wire probes wouldn't be enough. So these are always nice and handy to have. Now, as far as the AI capabilities of this grill, this is not like the chat GPT type of AI. And this really only comes into play when you are sending a recipe from the app to the grill. So look, you can't like just type in a bunch of keywords or different foods and then the app will make up this brand new recipe. So it's not that smart yet, but I will definitely call this a smart grill. And I like the fact that they are pushing out updates like the new power smoke feature. And if they keep doing stuff like that, that's going to make this grill better next year. I'm going to be all on board for that. Now, unfortunately, I forgot to record the final brisket that I made for Thanksgiving because I was running short on time and I had a lot of other stuff that I was doing, but it came out really nice and flavorful. A lot of juices coming out of that thing after I let it rest for like an hour. And also the smoke rings were very nice on it. Now we'll be using the power smoke feature for my next brisket cook. So we'll see how that works, but there are some improvements. As I mentioned before, I would like to have some front storage there on the front of the grill. And then also when it comes to the, uh, the pellet hopper, you don't have a way to completely empty out the pellets. Maybe you want to change to a different flavor. You kind of have to like either dig them out by hand or just go ahead and use them all. And then now you can go ahead and put your new flavor of pellets in it. Oh, it also would be nice if this grill could monitor the amount of pellets that are left in the hopper and then give you a notification, letting you know when you do need to refill that hopper. Right now, you still have to go and manually look and make sure you have enough pellets in there. And especially for like a long overnight cook, that is one of those things that you still kind of have to check manually yourself. But I do know that there are other kind of like smart grills that will be able to notify you when the pellets start to get low in your hopper. So I definitely want to see that in the next version of this grill. But outside of those things, this has been very fun to cook on. And I used to cook on a lot of like propane grills, which were easy, but being able to have these wood pellets add that extra punch of flavor uh, via the smoke and stuff is always really nice to have. So yeah, this is one of my favorite ways to cook right now. But anyway, that's all I got for you right now. Let me know what you think about this grill in the comments below. But like always, I do want to thank you for watching this video and I will catch you later. Peace.